시민의 입장에서 더큰 기대감과 어, 건축에 대한 전혀 다른 시각을 접할 수 있는 기회가 되겠다. I think at this moment, Seoul is one of the most exciting cities in the world. There's incredible creativity. There's imaginative energy across many, many sectors. And I think the city is in a time of optimism and feeling the potential of amazing change. I've enjoyed coming to Seoul for now about 10 years and it feeds me and so it's really exciting to now have some real incredible chances to be here and deepen the connection with this country and this city. I've never curated a Biennale before and I've been a designer and somebody working on urbanism and city living. So I was quite nervous to start off with, but what really drove me and inspired me to say yes, was that I've been going for 30 years and what's become clear to me is that we have had a catastrophe in cities all over the world we've been increasingly surrounded by an epidemic of characterless, boring, harmful buildings that are harmful for our mental health and for our planetary health. And that unless we change the way we talk about cities, that's not gonna change. So a Biennale is an opportunity to have a different kind of conversation and try to bring society into the mix. I think that cities worldwide have a big problem and it's something that at this time in history is particularly important, which is that the digital revolution and Korea has been leading that as much as anywhere else, has brought us many phenomenal benefits, but it has also had a side effect of pulling society apart. And we have had an epidemic of loneliness as more and more people are isolated, families are smaller and live in different parts of the world and so the question is the cities that we built were not designed to bring us together they were just the byproduct of how we used to um, function in society but that functioning has changed so much so we have to actively design the city to allow us to come together because the rhythms of life have been broken we used to get to know strangers in the street because every morning we caught the bus to work at roughly the same time. 
But now that people don't go to work at the same time, you're never going to have a conversation with the stranger that you wait at the bus stop next to after 10 times of waiting next to them. So, and even teaching and learning, you can lie in bed and study. You can even get a PhD while lying in bed. So it's really a severe problem of the hyper-digital and now we have to come back with the hyper-physical. And we have had an, this repetition of almost identical places made all over the world that don't tell stories about society. They don't give us our culture and encourage going slower and encourage incidental interaction with each other. We need to rehumanize the world around us. It's an urgent need. If we don't, we don't care about places. And at the moment, most buildings people don't care about. And the problem is that we then demolish those buildings in an average of approximately 40 years, commercial buildings get demolished. And the side that we don't talk about in society is that the environmental impact of demolition of buildings and rebuilding of buildings is much, much more than the aviation industry. So my vision of the Biennale is that we start a big conversation that brings people together who never normally speak. How do we get the construction industry, the architects, the builders, the city officials to be speaking and listening to the public that is not going to be driven by market values that's going to be driven by society speaking up and it's a bit like in the world of food we have come to talk in society about the nutritional value of the food we eat 40 years ago we were not talking about organic food about whole foods and foods that were really good for your gut and processed packaged food was what most people were used to. But then society realized that they were not really good for our health. And now it's become normal across society to think about the nutritional value. But we don't think about the nutritional value of buildings. And we've had very low nutritional value for the last 80 years. Since the Second World War, the buildings that have been built again and again and again are the minimum possible for what's inside. So they are selfish buildings. They are not good for society. And that is not about building incredible museums and crazy shapes, but it's about buildings having stories again in them, having detail. There is a necessary visual complexity that our brains need to be nourished. And it's not been happening, and it's not so much in the education system, it's not in the commissioning mindset, and only if society has a big conversation will that change. I realize that, so that's the exciting opportunity. And the built environment is normally discussed in terms of square footage and value in monetary terms. But we haven't been talking about how people feel and talking about emotion as an essential function in the cities around us. We talk quite a lot about how space is important already and how nature is important but we're not talking enough about the building surfaces and they affect how you feel and we need to make the world around us radically more joyful and engaging and we've had an astonishing amount of joylessness as cities look more and more the same and the creation of buildings that don't mean something socially to society means they're more likely to be demolished with disastrous effects 
for the planet, it becomes an urgent conversation and a conversation that hasn't happened yet. And it's an amazing opportunity. And I know that soul is the place that can lead that. There, is, there are leaders who really care. There's a city architect who really wants to help soul be a, a world leader. And so I feel very lucky to be the partner together with the city, together with the creative community of the city, to speak to the nine million soulites. You know, it's, a, it's a big city, a major metropolis. And if we can have a conversation that really engages not just construction industry experts, but really engages the city, you know, how do we get everybody talking and speaking together about how we create a built environment that nurtures our humanity rather than suppresses it. That cities are becoming soulless, characterless. So we need that conversation to come together. Normal people and the professionals need to speak together. So the legacy for me, success would be that people who were, became more sensitized to the city. So ordinary soulites get more sensitized to their own city and feel more empowered to speak and to talk and to not think that you just leave it to professionals. And so there's a conversation that has to happen because otherwise we will not make cities more joyful and engaging and humanized unless these two worlds come together. And the construction industry needs to hear. Most people have lived in buildings their whole life. They may not be professionally trained in how to design new ones, but they have intuitions and feelings and emotions that are true and not wrong. Ultimately, real sustainability is not about just how little energy your building uses or how much energy and carbon was used to create your building. Real sustainability is about social sustainability. And I'm gonna sound sentimental, but real sustainability is about love. And unless people love places, they're not sustainable. A big conversation about love and joy and emotion in the buildings around us is a funny thing. And so I think that's going to be incredible and that this is not just about the architecture profession. This is about everyone in the city saying, what kind of city do we want to live in? And I'm not making this a conversation only about beauty. It really isn't. Things can be meaningful for us when they're even a bit ugly, but we've had this epidemic of characterless, things that don't mean anything to anybody. So I think that we can have much more variety. So it's going to be about bringing it together and making phenomenal, unexpected, provocative conversations about love and the buildings around us and our humanity. It's, you can't get much more important than that.